the Most High. And he thought, his thoughts were the thoughts of the Most High. His actions were the actions of the Most High. Go ahead. Hear that? He made himself of no reputation. He wasn't trying to be somebody in hell. His condition that we in called hell. He didn't make himself a reputation. That's why he would say he would heal people and tell them, quick, fast, in a hurry. Don't tell nobody I did it. Don't tell nobody that I am Hamashiach, the Christ, the anointed, the Messiah. Don't tell no one. He didn't make himself no reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant. It was made in the likeness of men, just like every other man was made. That's what it's saying. Made in the likeness of men. Read. And being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. That's right. He humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now go to Philippians, the fourth chapter, and Start at verse 3. That. So you had women that helped Paul. And he told the brothers, say, help them that labor with them in the gospel. So I say, you know, women have their, their part in this too. Just like they had their part in there in, in the gospel back during the times of Paul. You say, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. They've done enough works. That their names are in the book of life, he's saying. And that's what we want our names to be in the book of life. But you got to be doing works. You can't do works by yourself. You got you can't be no individualist. Do an individual life. You can't be operating on your own. You got to operate in the spirit of the body of a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Read. He said, whatever he give you, take out. Whatsoever is given unto you, take out. Cheerfully. That's what he's saying, rejoice. Rejoice in the Most High. In the Most High, I would say, always. And again, I say, rejoice. Read. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Yeah, let your moderation be known unto all men. Read. Let them know, man, the most side of Mashiach Yahweh is at hand. Like he's at hand right now as we call upon him. Baha Shama Mashiach Yahweh as we read Colossians 3.17. All that we say and do is Baha Shama Mashiach Yahweh Giving thanks to the most high and the father. Baha Shama Mashiach Yahweh The day of the most high and the Mashiach Yahweh is at hand. Read. There it is. Be careful for nothing. But you got to pray in the spirit that you can reach the most high. Let it be known before the most high. And then say, since you pray to the most high, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Why? Because you pray to the most high. You got to believe it's going to happen. That's why I ask you, you pray? You pray that if you pray, why are you doubting the fact that you pray to the most high that he's not going to answer your prayer. That's doubt. You gotta, that's not faith in the Most High. As we say, make your request be known to the Most High. As you make a request be known to the Most High, you got to believe that he's going to answer your prayer. You got to speak it. Not all this negative of he's not hearing me or this, that, and the third, and then you're not really, you pray for him. You pray to him for whatever you needed, and then you're looking at, He's not answering your prayers. 
Because you're saying he's not answering your prayer, so he's not going to answer your prayer because you don't have faith in him. You ought to be crazy. Oh, yeah. We're crazy for a Mashiach, our shy name's sake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what he told us. You understand spiritual things. He told us that. Give, let me hold that. I give, give me a, go to uh, John 14 and start at verse 12. Y'all should know this by heart. If, if there's anybody new, then there's something that you need to know too. But read this. St. John 14 and 12. This is what he said. So he said, he gonna, if you believe on him, you're going to do the works that he done, and even greater works, because he's going to the Most High to send the Comforter back to us. That's the works that he done. And greater works than those that he done. And he's not a man he should lie, really. So he said, whatever we ask, by Shama Mashiach Yahushai, he said he's going to do it. That the most I could be glorified in the Mashiach Yahushai. Go ahead. It's verse 14, Ak. Where you at, Ak? You jump from 13 to 15. You tired? Read on. So it said, if you ask anything in the name of the Lord and Savior, you say, I will do it. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? When you pray, you believe that he's going to the most on your behalf? So you got to speak it. You got to understand. It's, a, it's a, a method that works every single time. But if you don't believe it, it's not going to work for you. That means you don't have faith. And nobody can make you have faith. you got to have faith on your own. We can show you the scriptures on faith. Go over them. But you got to study to make sure that you are approved on your own. you got to make sure that you're in the spirit. And you're not out of the spirit. You know, I mean, we can't go over this enough. You really realize this is the way, the only way. Get up Matthew, I mean, excuse me, Mark 11 and 22. We can't go over this enough. Why it seems like he said, if you ask, he said, I will go to the Father and I will do it. Mark 11 and 22. Right, so first he said we got to have faith in the Most High. And he's saying you want to you move this mountain or this problem you have away from you. First you got to have faith in the Most High. You got to tell the problem to be removed and be cast away from you. And you shall not doubt. I mean you believe. You have faith in the Most High. If you have faith in the Most High... You don't worry. That's doubt is worry. You say I'm worried. That shows doubt. No faith. Little faith. But shall believe. He said. Shall not doubt. In what you ask for in prayer. 
in your mind, but shall believe that those things which he said, so you're going to have what you say. Oh, I'm never going to get no money. You ain't going to never get no money. I need this, I need that, but I ain't going to never get it. You ain't going to never get it. I prayed to the Most High, but he ain't never answered me. He ain't going to answer my prayer. He ain't going to answer your prayer. See, one thing we don't realize is the power that's within us. We are we have power. But we don't realize it because we're too caught up in being Edomized. That 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 that's that that the Edomites did a whole lot of dysfunction in our minds. They have us thinking all off, man. Hold that, get Psalms 82 and 6. This is what he says. But you don't believe it, you don't believe it. I believe what he said. That's why you gotta hold fast to the word of the most high. Every word of the most high is pure. But it took, like I keep telling you, it's a formula. And you look at this for what's being said, and you take it, and you believe it, and you see it works. But it's not going to work for you if you don't believe it. You doubting him. That's why you're dealing with Satan. You're dealing with the devil. Because he the one that got you doubting. Doubting who? The Most High. Doubting the Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Listen to what he says about us. Psalms 82 and 6. Psalm 82 and 6. I have said, ye are gods. I have said, ye are little G's. Ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. You hear that? We the children of the Most High. But he called us gods. Little G's. We are powers. And that spiritual power that we have comes through what he's telling us in Baha Shema Mashiach Yahushua, having faith in the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Going back to Mark 11 and verse 24. Mark 11, verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, Hear that? So when you're praying, whatever you're asking in prayer, you gotta believe that you're receiving it. That's why you thank the most. I thank you most high in advance for what you get ready to do and what you have done. Believe you received it and you shall have it. That's complete faith without any doubt. And believing in the most high, having faith in the most high. That's the key. Read. Right. You said when you stand praying, you gotta forgive if you have a problem with anybody. That the most high can forgive you of trespass. That's why you're not supposed to be praying, you're not supposed to go into the most high or even walking around with odd against your brothers and sisters. Your brothers are doing that all the time. They're, they gotta think of something to come up with some kind of a uh, problem or odd with a brother that they ain't really dealing with. You don't even deal with it. So how you got a problem with somebody that you're not even around, you even have nothing to do with. It. But you still holding on to this thing all years and years and years. That's crazy. That's insane. But that's our people. Holding on to I. That's what I say. When you stand praying, you, those, the sin's not forgiven because you're sitting there having a problem with someone. Well, you're supposed to let that go. Is, is it that serious? I mean, seriously, a lot of things we look at is so petty. It's real petty. But it's, he's telling you, he said, when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. That your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Your trespasses. The things you have done. Your sins. Read. See, if you don't forgive people, then the Most High not going to forgive you the things that you have done that's wrong. And we all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Most High. So we got to forgive. We can't be holding on to grudges and things that are, you know, 
would have us not make it to the kingdom. That take energy to be sitting around hating on people and stuff and having problems with people. And you're not trying to help them to be better. Go to Mark, the fourth chapter. Let's start at uh, start at verse uh, thirteen, cause he gave a, he gave a parable of a farmer planting seed. And some fell by the wayside, some fell among stony ground, some fell among thorns, and some fell among good ground. So let's read the the, the uh, that's and one thing I want to say. Is he want, if he wanted everybody to understand that he wouldn't have talked in parables. It wouldn't be in parables. You would understand Revelation the first chapter to the twenty second chapter. Daniel's the first chapter to the twelfth chapter. You already understand all that. You know, the deep mysteries of Ezra and so forth. You would understand the mysteries of Ezekiel and all the prophets that prophesied things that would come in the future that most people don't understand. But let's read about it. About these parables. Start at verse uh, thirteen. So he said, hey, you don't know what I said? You don't understand what I was saying? So how are you going to understand all parables? Go ahead. Now you're going to break it down. Read. Verse 14, the sower sowed the word. And these are they by the wayside. These are they by the wayside. So the sower is sowing the word. The word of the Most High. Give you the word of the Most High. Like the messengers of the Most High. Give you the word of the Most High. And these are they by the wayside. Read. Hear that? These are they by the wayside. A lot of brothers have fell by the wayside. Because the word was sown <coughs> in righteousness to them. But when they have heard, here comes Satan. Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now they believe in something else. They somewhere believing in something else. Satan comes in and takes away the word that they were given. Read. Right? So people hear the word, they be all, yeah, hey, I'm an Israelite. They be all glad. They receive it with gladness, read. They be happy, read. See, these ones that don't have no root who the root, or Mashiach Yahweh is the root. They don't really have a Mashiach Yahweh Some brothers have turned from a Mashiach Yahweh to Jesus Christ. Going back to Jesus Christ. Some done forgot about a Mashiach, now they go back to a Yahweh Shai. You know, some have, some is just, it's just like, because they don't have a root of a Mashiach Yahweh in them. And so endure for, for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution arises, for the word's sake, you know, for what the word says, immediately they are offended. They're offended. For what? The word, what the word says. Or what you have given them according to the word of the Most High. Read. According to what's right spiritually and not carnally. Not looking over their feelings. But looking at what's spiritually right for them to be built spiritually up instead of carnal, carnally. Because they're worldly. Read. Remember, they have no foundation. They have the foundation of my shy. Therefore, they're worldly. Read. That's right, man. That's why I always tell you. When the book is closed, what's the word on you? What are you doing when the book is closed? When you ain't in this in this word like we in now? You know? Those ones that's that's dealing with being thrown among thorns. 
you know, and the cares of this world. They so worried about the cares of this world. As he told you, don't worry about nothing. The most I take care of the birds, take care of the lilies, take care of everything. But here you are worried about everything in the world. You gotta please the world, because you're worldly. And the the sequel is other riches. Always seeking out the money. Running out the money, trying to get money. And the lust of other things, lust. You know, men going after all kind of women. Women looking at men. You know, mess with this man and that man. Going from man to man to man. Lust. Got a lust demon. And the lust of other things entering in, choke the word. It's going to happen. It chokes the word. Or you, out, you let your lust, whatever it is that's keeping you from studying. That's lust. That's slothfulness and lazy. That's a lazy spirit. That's a lustful spirit of something that you're doing. Some of you might be doing some other things than studying. Especially you that don't know the word. That can't bring it out. You know. You Those are demons that have you stopped. That's stopping you from doing what you're supposed to do. Trying to keep you from the kingdom. Entering in choke the word. And it becomes unfruitful. That's why you can't bring forth the precepts that you need to have to be able to go into what you need to help yourself. If you ain't studying, if you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing to make sure that you okay, that you won't become unfruitful. Verse 20. right man bringing forth fruit you hit a word it brings the joy in you and you bring forth fruit man you blossom the plant blossom in the fruit when you bring forth some 30 some 60 some 100 a lot of people are being going to be edified just from this lesson alone because they need, they need this. And these are the things that we all need. We just got to go over it. You got to study it. Go back to Philippians, the fourth chapter. Start at verse four. Right, rejoice in the most high of Mashiach Yahushai always. And again I say, rejoice. Be happy. Whatever the most I give you, take how cheerfully. Read. be made known unto the most high. We don't be careful of nothing, because I mean, you know, a lot of times, man, you be careful of nothing, it, 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 it makes you age, man. People are old, they get old before their time. Always careful for the, about this, looking at looking at this and looking at that. Listen, you know, man, they do they done age. Cause they so worried about this. Worry, 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 worry. Why you worry? Because you have little faith. That's why you were. And that's not good. It's not good at all. Get uh, Ecclesiasticus, the 30th chapter in Apocrypha. And start at verse 21. And 21. Not 
So it says, give not over the, your mind into heaviness, and afflict not yourself in thine own counsel, the way you think. This way I think, you know, but then you always dealing with, uh, woe was me, woe was me. That's giving over your mind to heaviness. And afflict not thyself. You're afflicting yourself with your own counsel. Your own thinking. Read. The gladness of the heart is the life of man. Yeah, the gladness of the mind is the life of man. That's why he, he keeps saying rejoice. Say whatever he gives you, whatsoever he gives you, take how? Cheerfully. Say rejoice. The gladness of the heart is the life of man. Read. So if a man is happy, that's going to prolong his days. Hear that? That's going to prolong his days. But if you're all sad and all mad and all, all the time, all tight and, and need to be unwind, like you bring, like you bring a, 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 a wet rag, just bring it, you never can unravel yourself, man. You all set, setting yourself up for death and sadness and depression. That's why you're depressed. Because the gladness of the heart is the life of man, and the joyfulness of a man prolongs his days. Read. Hear that? Love yourself. Love yourself. Love your character. Love who you are. And comfort yourself. Read. Hear that? Move sorrow far from you. So, some people bring sorrow. <laughs> You got to move it from yourself. He said, move sorrow far from you. Read. Yeah, that sorrow have killed many. Being sad, sadness have killed many. Many have died from broken hearts. From being just being sad alone. Sorrow have killed many. Read. And there is no prophet therein. Ain't no prophet therein, man. That's what he's telling us. Go back to Philippians, the fourth chapter. Verse 7. Peace of a Mashiach Kavashai, which passes all understanding. That's why I say people don't really, they don't, they don't know the peace of a Mashiach Kavashai. That's why you look for man to bring the peace that a Mashiach Kavashai say he's going to give you. But if you don't have that peace, you don't know anything about that peace, get, get that peace he's talking about, because they ain't just talking about the peace that a Mashiach Kavashai told us in John, the 14th chapter, 27th verse. Read this. Peace that he's talking about, he's gonna give us. But it's the peace of a Mashiach Yahushua. Say, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives it, because the world don't know this peace that he's talking about. This is a special peace that does what? Surpasses all understanding, people. Say, let not your heart be troubled. Don't be worried about nothing. Neither let it be afraid. So it let you know that this is not, he's giving us the, that's why I say spiritually, when I talk about spiritually, that's why I say, okay, you're not spiritual. This is just has to be a carnal spirit that's coming because get, uh, hold that, get 2 Timothy, uh, I believe 1 and 7. Verse 7. For the Most High has not given us 
See, the Most High and the Master Yahweh Shai haven't given us a spirit of fear. I don't come from the Most High. He ain't given us a spirit of fear. Those of His elect, those of His chosen, the sheep to hear of Master Yahweh Shai's voice, the one third of the twelve tribes of Israel. Read. Hear that? The Most has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. That spiritual power, too, by Hashem of Mashiach, and of love, keeping of the commandments of the Most High, and of a sound mind. But your mind can only be sound if you know precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, of all the topics of life that's in the scriptures. That's why you got to study. You got to study. You have to study. Not just few scriptures. You got to study the whole lesson and put it all together as it's coming to you in the spirit. Go back to Philippians 4. Verse 8. No, that's, that's okay. Give me a... Uh, uh, Verse 9. Philippians. Chapter 4. Verse 